Think about these titles, Abbey, Archbishop, Bishop, Cardinal, Cassock, Chaplain, Cleric, Curate, Dean, Director, Divine, Ecclesiast, Exarch, Father, Metropolitan Minister, Monsignor, Padre, Parson, Patriarch, Pope, Prelate, Presbyter, Pontiff, Preacher, Priest, Primate, Pulpiteer, Rector, Reverend, Vicar. If those titles sound strange to you, how about these? Senior Pastor, Youth Pastor, Associate Pastor, Executive Pastor, Singles Pastor, Pastor of Music, Pastor of Spiritual Formation, Pastor of Worship Arts, Pastor of Sports Ministries, Pastor of Outreach, or maybe Director of Outreach, or Director of Youth, or Director of Sports Ministries, or Lay Elder, Board Elder, Non-Board Elder. In light of all of that, is it any wonder that most people are confused about the specifics of church leadership? Okay, how can God's Word help us when it comes to this issue? There are a number of verses that are really, really helpful on this topic. But let's start with 1 Peter 5.1. Listen to how the Apostle Peter addresses the leaders in the church to whom he writes. So I exhort you, the elders among you, as a fellow, fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. So first of all, notice that Peter in verse one is addressing the elders among you. Now the word for elder here is the word presbuteros in Greek. It literally means someone who is older. Okay, so maybe Peter is addressing in this verse everyone over 65 in this church congregation. Well, the rest of the, these verses make it clear that Peter is specifically addressing the leadership here. And if we look at the Old Testament and the early church in the book of Acts, and even the Greek Roman world at this time, it would not be surprising that the leaders of the church are referred to here as elders, referred to in the New Testament as elders. But while village elders were and still are a common feature all over the world, the emphasis here is not on chronological maturity, but spiritual maturity. But there's another key word here. The verb used in verse two, translated there as shepherd, is the verb poimino. The noun form of that word also appears in this passage in verse 4. There it's referring to the chief shepherd. Peter adds the word chief because he wants to stress that Jesus is the divine shepherd over these earthly shepherds. That same noun, poimino, is also used by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 4.11 where he writes, And he gave the apostles the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, or the pastor teachers, he gave them to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. So pastor is just another term for shepherd. And as we saw in 1 Peter 5, that word pastor or shepherd is simply another title for an elder. An elder is one who shepherds or pastors God's flock. But there's still another key word here. Not only does Peter call these elders to shepherd the flock of God that is among you, but he also refers in verse 2 to them exercising oversight. Someone who exercises oversight would be called an overseer. And that is, in fact, a title used by Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 3. He says there in verse 1, the saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. So is Paul introducing a new church leadership office in this verse, 1 Timothy 3.1? No, he's simply referring to an elder using the term overseer. This is clear when you keep 1 Timothy 3 in mind and look at the same list of qualifications and duties in Titus chapter 1. And yet the context is clearly there in Titus 1. It's clearly about appointing elders. 
So what does all of this mean? It means an elder is a pastor and a pastor is an overseer and therefore an overseer is an elder. So it's pretty clear from the New Testament that a local church has only one primary leadership role, the office of elder. The word elder speaks to a man's spiritual maturity, but this man is also called an overseer in reference to the nature of his spiritual work. But additionally, he's referred to as a pastor, which I believe speaks to how he should carry out that spiritual work. Now, three qualifications are really important and really helpful in making sense of all of this, especially today. First, elders slash pastors slash overseers are always men. This is clear from the qualifications given by Paul and from almost every place elders appear in the New Testament. Now, that doesn't in any way deny that women have teaching and leadership gifts. It simply lines up with God's design for male leadership in the home. Why is that? What's the connection? Because the church is a faith family. As Paul expressed this in 1 Timothy 3, 4, and 5, a potential elder must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church, that is, God's household? Second, when it comes to elders, there is always more than one. As we've seen, Peter addresses multiple elders in the church to whom he writes. When Paul meets with ministry leaders in Ephesus in Acts chapter 20, he meets with the elders of the church. Paul's instructions to Titus are not to appoint an elder in every town on the island of Crete, but elders plural, Titus chapter 1 verse 5. This arrangement from God truly provides safety in numbers. Leaders not only shoulder the work together and provide mutual accountability, but wisely no one individual is put in a position of overall authority. Third, some elders may be freed up for full-time service. While there is no difference between an elder and a pastor and an overseer, we do find a distinction within this office. Paul tells, talks about this in 1 Timothy 5. Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scriptures say, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain, and the laborer deserves his wages. Here we see that it may be wise to financially support those elders who are especially good leaders and teachers. Why is that? so they can be freed up to devote more of their time to the work of Christ. We often call these full-time elders pastors, but we have to be careful with this distinction. This double honor does not make such men any better than their fellow elders. Biblically, all of them are pastors and all of them are still entrusted with the same work. So while Christian culture has cluttered leadership language over the centuries, the New Testament description remains fairly simple as we see in the greeting in Philippians chapter 1 verse 1. Every church should be led by a plurality of elder slash pastor slash overseers who in turn are supported in practical ways by a team of deacons. This is God's gracious design for his new covenant people.